what's up out there everybody doing a little sound check here just uh, hanging out in my studio hope you guys can hear that what's up Nick Bell what's up Ross what's up Ross cool well I'm glad you guys are there hopefully uh, everything sounds okay and y'all can hear me good um, uh, today I'm just monitoring myself with headphones so it feels a little a little awkward but uh, uh, I feel like that's easiest that way we don't get a bunch of um, crazy feedback and stuff happening. Sounds good. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, bruh. Okay, well, I see we got some people joining in. So let's see here what we're talking about today. Uh, I'm going to be going into that ambiguous zone of what we call feel controls um, on, on Helix. Uh, so the reason we call these field controls, sorry, that looks that looks ridiculous. Oh well, <laughs> um, uh, we call these field controls. Uh, they are controls such as sag, um, hum, um, hum, ripple, bias. So you know we we consider those field controls because a lot of times it's such a subtle change when you start tinkering with those things that it's not always something that that you really hear right off the bat especially for the listeners your audience or your lack of an audience in my case but um so but if you're the guy behind the guitar playing a lot of times those changes are more obvious uh, and uh you know for an example uh, I guess, you know, the first thing I'll start off with talking about would be over here. Let's let's switch over to Helix view. Um, so here we, we have the, the good old editor. Uh, let's see. So if you'll notice, uh, I'm down here on my amp. I'm using the Grammatico Normal. And that's because I was just really tinkering with these feel controls last night and um, I felt like this amp was very sensitive to certain changes with these effects or these parameters and it really sounded cool to me and then uh, I spiced it up with a few other things but the first one you'll notice down here uh, is SAG uh, as far as the list of what we consider feel controls so you'll notice right now I have the sag all the way down. Now, basically, what, what to, to put it um, in, in the simplest terms, which for me would be regular terms because I'm pretty simple, uh, I think of sag as like tube compression. <laughs> so, you know, on a fresh, brand new amp, your sag's probably going to be zero, you know, or this is ideal. I don't know, maybe not. It's, you know, it just depends, I guess, on how tubes are set up. Uh, in, in different amps but as a tube kind of gets older and wears out um, it's it starts to get this you know what we consider sag and it's just basically wear and tear on the tube and the, the, the audible you know effect that this has is if you've ever the, what I what I think about is if you've ever been playing on an amp some strange amp that you're not used to you know how it how it feels or sounds um multitasking i see tone shack you are something else you should you should check out ross bailey now there is a there is a multitasker right there uh but anyway um it, it's one of those things where you, you dig in to your guitar you, you feel like you're not quite hearing yourself like you're not as present as you feel like you should be and and you it causes you to dig in and try to play a little harder and then you notice that it's even worse the more you dig in um, if you you know some people may love that and sometimes I like it but that's essentially that's what tube sag is you're getting this initial compression on the pick attack and then it sort of catches up you know a millisecond later or, or you know a couple of milliseconds later um, so those first couple notes may even feel like they're not, uh, you know, as loud or responsive. Definitely, you can you can feel it in the attack. 
Now, the person out front listening may just think, oh, he sounds like Eric Johnson. He has no pick attack. But if you're the one playing, you realize, no, dude, I'm digging in and things aren't working for me. You know, if this is something you're not ready for or not used to, I've certainly experienced this uh, when I was younger and didn't know what was going on. And it's very frustrating, especially if you're already nervous, <laughs> like I stay. Um, so, you know, that's that's what that is. And sometimes that's actually a desirable thing. Um, now, of course, if you're playing through some kind of high gain situation and uh, you want a really precise pick attack, then I would not turn the sag on 10. I would turn it down to zero like it is right now. Um, and sometimes I like it turned up. Uh, I just happened to come across this last night and before it was all said and done, uh, all the tinkering I was doing, this is how this preset that I created ended up sounding. Uh, so what I'll do, I'll, I'll just kind of dry up uh, what we're working with here. Uh, let's turn off some of these bells and whistles. Let's see. Get rid of this guy. Well, I'm trying to. Let me come out of that and come back in. I think my mouse might have a low battery. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so everything is off now except for just the amp. And you'll see the sag is way down here. <laughs> And just uh, as a as a uh, full disclosure, I think I like this particular preset more uh, with a single coil setting. So if I just another another side note, you know the thing there, for some reason now when the amp is completely cranked up, you'll notice uh, I've got the master volume and the channel volume all the way up. Um, bias is all the way up. The normal drive is, you know, fairly high. <sighs> Having the amp cranked and pushing it more will bring out these nuances um, more so than if you are playing around with a clean sound. You know, you got to get aggressive for this. And for the same, by the same token, when I uh, use a single coil pickup, you know. Single coils, just something about them. Uh, obviously, you know, first thing people think is they're noisy, but they sound so good. And, and that noise, <laughs> it also picks up some sort of organic uh, qualities from just the resonance of the guitar that a humbucker sort of um, gets rid of. You know, a humbucker just seems to saturate everything more in this particular sound. And to me, a single coil has got a little bit more of an organic sound to it so let's just take this sag and you know watching this online I don't know like we say these are feel controls so I don't know if you can particularly feel this uh, when you're not the one playing especially when you're listening through computer monitors or something but I'm just gonna crank the sag all the way up because these are so subtle these effects are so subtle that it's hard to notice a difference. First of all, here's here's what we started with. And I'm really digging in too, man. I'm 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 coming down on that stuff. So uh, now we'll turn the sag all the way up. So, you know, kind of as I dig in a little more. I can kind of feel it. Now, something else that's that's going to affect that in this situation is the fact that I have my bias all the way up. Okay? So, let's bring the bias down. So, when it's on 10, essentially, I'm functioning as a Class A amplifier. And, you know, that's going to be more along the lines of a Vox, 
a bad cat, matchless, something like that. Uh, and I really like that sound too. Again, it seems to be more organic for whatever reason. You know, the the distortion just feels more like you're just pushing this amp. And right now I don't have any effects going either. But uh, I'm going to bring the bias down to zero. So now essentially we're running like a cold biased uh, cold biased tubes or, or an amp. And so what happens there is, <laughs> and, and I'll try to explain this without reading it straight up. I'm, I'm trying to explain it the way I think about it. Um, a, a cold bias or a class AV amp has uh, will kind of go down to a resting point like the the, the power amp uh, because there's not as much voltage coming through it at that given at any given moment when you're not playing it or, or pushing it or driving it you know um, that master volume so essentially you get a little bit darker sound or less sparkly but you also can get uh, it's almost like a <laughs> I feel like that overdrive has is, is got a little bit more saturated sound. Let, let's play a little bit. I've got the sag all the way up and the bias all the way down. Let's turn the sag all the way down again. That's immediate. Immediately I can feel that difference. I don't know if it's audible for you guys, but immediately that's more responsive. Um, it's actually a little brighter. Let's just check out what the other pickups sound like too. Cool. Now, now let's keep the sag all the way down and turn the bias all the way up. And again, I'm you know I'm digging in quite a bit, so. Uh, and I feel like, you know, you have to kind of dig in to really get a feel for these. Um, let's see who we got. Uh, who's tuning in with us? Michael Anthony Grabowski. Hi to you. J. Christopher Canayo. What's up? What's up, Sheldon Fisher? Um, let's see who else is out there. What's up, Lee? Anybody else? Hey, Dontavius Turner. What's up, dude? Good to see you on here. Thanks for tuning in, man. Um, so, uh, anybody just joining us? I'm just 
kind of tinkering around with the bias and the sag, the feel controls right now. Um, let's, uh, let's, let's continue on, shall we? I'm supposed to cram all this into 30 minutes, and this is such a, I don't know, I feel like this is a, a pretty heady conversation to have here. So I may go over 30 minutes. I'm sorry. If you guys start getting bored, let me know. William J. Metzger in the house. What's up? You guys, my, my man from Affiant Records uh, just signed uh, signed with his label. So we got a new album coming out, coming out tomorrow. So I'll remind you guys before we get off of here to check that out. <clears throat> All right. Let's see here. Back to the control panel. Um, so, so far we've got the sag on zero, the bias on 10. This to me is kind of the ultimate uh, responsive sound because, you know, I've got my, my amp is basically running like a hot biased amp, so it's fully class A. Now, in reality, this would cause more heat, probably cause your tubes to wear out quicker. But that's okay because the tone is, is slamming. Um, now we have the sag all the way down on zero, and that just gives us maximum uh, responsive sound. What happens if the bias is all the way up and the sag is all the way up? Let's just see. Again, I can immediately feel a, a spongier uh, a pick attack. I hate to say spongy. That almost doesn't sound good. It feels really good to me. It's just like really lush and juicy. So, you know, what happens, I'm, I'm digging that so far, so let's, what happens if we throw uh, some, some weird overdrive on there, how about that, let's see uh, what happens, um, I've got the air apparent, and I think I just popped this on here, straight factory, there's no changes in the, in the way I have it set, um, I was just digging it, so. <laughs> feel that in the higher notes you know we're pushing it I'm gonna move on because I could just mess with these two things all day but I kind of I want to kind of try to touch on everything else so uh, let's see the bias is all the way up sag is all the way up we'll just leave it like it is for now and I'm gonna talk about these other this uh, hum and ripple this is where it starts to get a little more interesting um, how about we, well, we'll just leave the sag where it is because kind of the idea of this is to mimic, you know, pushing a tube amp, you know, beyond where it should be. So right now I have the hum all the way down, um, as you can see, but what this does, again, hum is sort of like, well, it's like a 60 cycle hum sort of, um, you know, when an amp. <clears throat> When an amp has some miles on it, some years on it, you may get some a little buzz, you know, or a, or a hum, you know, the sound of electricity. And uh, there are certain phases of this lifespan that you may like. Now, you can see I have it all the way down. One reason I like, I, I chose this amp to play with is because when I crank the hum all the way up, it's... It's gonna be freaky deaky, but let's let's kind of get there in increments. So, you know, here we are now. I turned the distortion back off. Um, the sag is way up, bias is way up, and it's honestly it's pretty sensitive to touch. You can see that time I I was not really playing real hard. Thank <laughs> you. 
We'll turn it about halfway up. Still not too bad, but if we go to about 75%, I'm not sure if you guys hear that, but you start to get this, this little, there's a little hum, I'm already hearing it in my ears here. further. Oh, y'all hear that? with this I just cranked it all the way up to see because you can get like some weird overtones with this sometimes so let's just go all the way up with it. I feel like um, I feel like what I'm hearing there is a major third, like, but it's I guess you would call it a minor sixth in this situation, but it's like two or three octaves down. Um, Tim says it's hard to read the controls in the video. Um, sorry about that, man. Is it like uh, is it like the picture is not good or is it just small because if it's just small I can't really do anything I've got to fill it up the entire screen but if it's a bad picture I can't really do anything either because it's probably just uh, you know internet but uh, it shouldn't be that because I'm I'm hardwired into the router so sorry if it's uh, difficult to read uh, let's see who else tone for days thanks thanks Ross Thanks, Walt. Appreciate that. Yeah, Freaky Deaky should be the name of my next track. I'm going to dedicate it to, um, again, that guy Ross I was telling you about. He's He he is Freaky Deaky, the ballad of Ross Bailey. Um, the resolution um, makes it blurry. Sorry about that, man. I uh, wish I could do something about it, but if I try to go any higher with the stream quality, I'm afraid it may affect the audio and I'm more concerned about the audio. So hopefully the audio is okay. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of explaining what I'm reading off 
or what I'm changing as we go. So sorry, I, I could next time I'll try doing a higher resolution, but if the sound is bad, that's why. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. <sighs> También tengo una guitarra eléctrica. I wish I could speak Spanish, but that's something about playing the guitar, the electric guitar. <laughs> Feel free to translate. Um, okay, let's move on a little bit. Sorry, I uh, got a little hung up there. Sorry about the uh, picture quality, um, but let's, let's continue. I hope you guys aren't getting bored yet. It's almost been 30 minutes. See, I don't know how we're going to get this done in 30 minutes. <laughs> Um, I, what I was pointing out there a minute ago was just when the hum is up almost to an unacceptable level, I do get some interesting overtones. typically because I, I'm noisy enough when I play without any help from the amp, okay? So I think that kind of covers hum. It's a subtle thing, and you can tell there are subtle differences. So, um, you know, it, 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 you may, you know, for, an, for a serious audio file, you can go in there and just tweak it, and you may get just enough of that hum that you're like, oh, perfect, there it is, you know? And I'm not knocking that at all because a guitar is a beautiful thing and so is an amplifier and there's no one perfect way um, to control one. So let's, uh, let's move down here to Ripple. This is another very strange um, effect. Uh, so this basically, the Ripple controls how much AC, alternating current Ripple in the power supply interacts with your tone. Okay. Uh, the power supply of a tube amp is filtered through uh, capacitors. So when the amp is driven, these capacitors can provide sufficient filtering and some AC ripple is introduced into the signal. This is similar to hum, but it's on the plate of the tube instead of the heater of the tube. And it has a different shape. So again, this is something that I'm not, you know, I'm not super into necessarily. Let me turn this distortion back off. And uh, let's turn it all the way down. And I'm going back to single coil too, because you know, just a, an amp that's being pushed with some single coils to me really brings out these subtle nuances of of the amp sound. I'm not tired of hearing A major yet. Let's let's change key. Let's go to let's go to G. I guess I don't know. It's a nice guitar. <laughs> neck pickup. Middle 
pole position sounds pretty interesting. Pretty gnarly. So let's put this ripple up on uh, about halfway. Ah, uh, no, let's go all the way. pick up that was the middle position wow i started in g major and now i'm in b flat i don't even know how i did that i wish i'd taken notes that's pretty cool <laughs> Let's go ahead and see what it sounds like on Humbucker. See how much more saturated that sounds? Kind of nice on the on the bridge pickup though, you know, you get some some kind of nice crunchy break. Now, so that's uh, the ripple, and I've kind of touched on the bias already. Um, let's let's kind of set things back. I don't even remember how I started, so I'm just gonna <laughs> I'm gonna come out of this preset, go back into it. Also, um, let me have anybody who is interested. This pickup, uh, this preset is available on the custom tone page as of um, precisely about 30 minutes ago, 36 minutes ago. So um, go check it out. Baby Crunch is the name. And if you don't know, then you'll never know. But anyway, yeah. Check that out. Uh, that's available. Um, okay, back into Helix. So. Now we're back to how this this guy was, you know, when we started. And um, I'm just going to tinker around with the bias a little bit. Now, the sag is all the way down. And just so you can get an idea of, of um, you know, how the bias feel. I think we kind of already looked at this, but let's just look at it again. Just so you make, make sure you guys know. I'm back to single. <laughs> more kind of a saturated sound with that as well.
back down to the neck pickup. right in the middle it's just kind of lukewarm to me so whatever you know super organic. Uh, so that's your bias controller. I have got it right back to where I had it. And then I had the sag all the way down for this. So let's look at Bias X. This is another, um, this one's tricky, but I think it, it, it has some useful differences. Um, the Bias X determines, I'm, I'm gonna read this off exactly because I think this is the one that everybody asked about the most. This determines how the power amp tubes voicings reacts when pushed hard, okay? Controlling how much the bias changes when the amp is driven hard. Bias X is a bit like SAG, um, except it controls change in the tube's operating point due to changes in the tube's bias when the amp is driven hard. So again, you need that amp to be cranked like this. And so if I crank this, this normal drive up even more, and then I'll, I'll go ahead and turn this Bias X all the way up. That's some serious fuzz. Let's do a hum. Let me bring this back down a little bit. Uh, let's see. It's pretty nice on the higher notes because um, you can get kind of a saturated sound. It somehow adds some sustain. Uh, it's a little too muddy down low. For But what happens if we put a little salt and pepper on it? How about, let's put some modulation. Very little bit of modulation. And some overdrive. Middle position. Thank you. 
mistake there. Mistakes are free of charge. So, uh, you know, you get to see a little more difference in it when you, um, you know, really push everything and maybe add some overdrive. Here's the bias right in the middle, or bias X. See, I like that more already. It just sounds more clear. back down so um, you know now let's just have a little fun let's see anybody got any crazy questions everybody's still watching hey we still got you guys are still here thanks um, hey look at there look at uh, look at Ross Bailey thanks man um, yeah, baby crunch uh, with a K. <laughs> That's my wife's name. <laughs> Not really. Okay, um, now let's just have a little fun with this. Uh, let's see. Just show you guys a little more about this preset real quick. I'm going to throw... Uh, now, here's something else. I'm kind of deviating here, but this is also a feel thing to me. I'm gonna turn this compressor on. I've got a, I've got the uh, kinky compressor at the very first, and it's gonna. I mean, it just makes your tone soar. And in, the, in, the, in this case, you know, I'll go to the humbucker. Something like that. Now, another little secret recipe that I like to use is this other compressor. I've got the LA Studio Comp at the very end of the chain. Now, of course, in reality, we can't really do this, but with a Helix, we can. And this glosses over everything and makes it even more brutal in a good way. touch for me um, to make it everything better this is a really cool effect if you use it uh, sparingly I guess or, or tastefully I've got this vintage swell which is like a delay and a compressor in one but you get that nice uh, that swell into your notes it's one of my favorite sounds That sounds good, you know, single coil, humbucker, whatever you want to do. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll just kind of go through a little bit of how that sounds different. I'll go into the humbucker here. I'm back in A major again. Sorry, guys. string so awesome that's that's uh the universe telling me it's time to wrap it up so um i'm gonna wrap it up there 
That is so rock and roll. I ended my live stream breaking a string. I was rocking too hard on my Yamaha Pacifica. This guitar rocks, y'all. I got these Seymour Duncan pickups in here. Coil tap. Um, stainless steel. Jumbo frets. It's awesome. I love this guitar. I hope that was helpful for everybody. Um, let me see. We got a... <laughs> What's this? Uh, Tony, did you... Try the kinky comp with gain at zero between the amp and cab. I did that, and I also like the two pre in between the amp and cab. Um, I haven't tried that exactly, but I mean, everything sounds pretty cool, you know, uh, as long as you're tasty. Just as a side note, those compressors, I have them both set at 50%, so um, they're not at, at 100, so, you know, you, you don't want to have them at 100. I don't, anyway, but... Uh, yeah, Mauro. Is that Mauro? Not Mario. Mauro. Trying my best, man. Yes, thank you for asking. Um, but anyway, so, you know, this that preset is available. Baby Crunch is the name. And Line 6 is the game. So thank you all for tuning in. I just want to remind you. First of all, let me just rant real quick. Guys, I've got, like... I just hit 5,700 followers on Instagram, and that's awesome. I really appreciate it, but that's just, can, could you guys help me get to like 6,000, please? That would make me so happy. It is so hard to get followers on Instagram, and then they unfollow you the next day. So, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't cost anything to make me happy. Just go follow me on Instagram. Now, what will make me even happier is if you guys will go check out my new album, Numbers, which is dropping tomorrow. July 9th, Friday, um, being uh, distributed from my good friends at Affiant Records. Go check that out. Um, I've got a single out. The, the title track is available now on all platforms, but the entire album will be available tomorrow. Um, and uh, I told everybody on Instagram, and I'll tell you guys, if you download it or stream it, whatever you're using, screenshot that bad boy and share it to your story on Instagram and tag me in it and I will reshare that and I will send you a free PDF of uh, this lick that I played Wednesday, I think, uh, on this guitar. Um, so go check that lick out. It's from two days ago, I think, and uh, I will send that PDF with notation and tablature to you for free if you guys stream my album and share it on your Instagram page. So thank you guys all for tuning in. I hope uh, I hope this was, you know, helpful and and somewhat informative for you. These are these are interesting parameters, and I would love to play some more for you. But I just broke a string, and I'm too lazy to get up and grab another guitar. So I'm gonna sign off. Stick a fork in me, guys. Um, tune in again next week. I can't remember who we have up next week. Is it Ross? Um, Ross, are you up next week? Who who's doing this next week? Somebody let me chime in if they know. Anyway, thank you all for tuning in. I appreciate it. And uh, please check out the new album, and I'll see you guys soon.